The Pittsburgh Steelers are coming to town on Sunday, and Panthers interim head coach Steve Wilkes is hoping to avoid a takeover, challenging Panther fans to be there at the bank on Sunday. Will you be there? I think you should. The Carolina Panthers need to win out, and if they do, they'll be NFC South title champs and be hosting a playoff game come January. We'll talk about it here in a more right here on Locked on Panthers. You are Locked on Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. Be sure to watch our show and subscribe to our show over on our Locked On Panthers YouTube channel. We're following every Carolina Panthers game. I am there live on YouTube, breaking it all down. Also go live whenever there is live breaking news here for your Carolina Panthers. If you ever miss a show on YouTube, whether it's live or recorded, that's okay. You can check out the show wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just be sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss a single edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where every single Friday I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions here on the show to participate in this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag, either at me or DM me over there on Twitter at Julian Council. Today's episode of Locked On Panthers is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24 7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more today. The Carolina Panthers finally did something they have not done all season long and hadn't done since last November in Arizona by winning on the road 30 to 24 against the Seattle Seahawks, who now dropped the seven and six and out of the NFC wildcard spot. While the Carolina Panthers advanced to five and eight, the Panthers also get their first back-to-back wins since week two and week three of the 2021 season where they beat the Saints and followed up on a Thursday night by beating the Houston Texans. It's been a very long time here in mid-December where the Carolina Panthers were playing actual meaningful football games where they could actually be a playoff team. We got to go back probably to 2018 when unfortunately Cam Newton and his shoulder were falling apart and the Panthers had that epic drop off in the second half of the season. And it was probably more so November when they were still in it, not really December, but the Carolina Panthers sitting at five and eight in the worst division in football. And you can even question whether the AFC South is all that great, considering the Tennessee Titans have now lost three straight games, fired their general manager, John Robinson, which was a shock in the league last week. And they aren't really heading in the right direction. The Bucs are no good here, of course, in the NFC South. The Falcons have changed quarterbacks. Desmond Ritter is going to get the start on Sunday against the New Orleans Saints. And the Saints coming off a bye are saying that, yes, we are, in fact, still going to stick with Andy Dalton despite paying Jameis Winston all that money to be their starting quarterback during the offseason. So that's where we sit here in the NFC South. The Panthers, if they win the rest of their games, go 6-0. To close out the season, they will be NFC South champions. And they will be hosting a playoff game on MLK weekend and Super Wild Car weekend here in the National Football League. Panthers interim head coach, and he might not be interim for much longer. And we'll get more into that here in a moment. Steve Wilkes spoke to the media as he always does following the Panthers game on a Monday's day after press conference. And he challenged you, you, the fan, to show up on Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Having grown up here, Steve Wilkes has to be aware of what happens every time Pittsburgh goes in that stadium. I am fully aware of it. Having grown up here in Charlotte, having gone to Panther games growing up as a kid, every time Pittsburgh came to town, there were more Steeler fans and more terrible towels than there were Carolina Panthers fans. We can try and say it was 50-50, but it was a home game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That has just been the reality, and we've seen since David Tepper's taken over when he hired Matt Rule. We watched Vikings fans take over that stadium. And I don't see Vikings fans take over any stadium. We've seen Eagles fans take over a stadium, which is not something that's not that doesn't happen. But certainly, that is not a good look. We saw the 49ers fans take over a stadium, which they did even back 
in 2013 when the Panthers hosted a divisional round game in the playoffs. There's plenty of Niner fans in there. We've seen Cowboy fans do it. We've seen all those legacy franchises last season, the Patriots. We've seen way too many stadium takeovers. And the demographics of this city, with all the transplants coming in, that is going to be an issue that we're going to deal with. But the team's good. And the team has something to play for, especially like they do on Sunday. There really should not be an excuse. And I already had someone DM me being like, oh, I really hope it's not a takeover. And that same person, not to really call them out and say that they're in the wrong. They're going with six of their friends who are Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So maybe don't go to the game with your buddies. Now, if they bought the tickets separately, then, of course, whatever. But that's part of the problem. The Panther fans have to do their best to keep to get in there and keep the Steelers fans out there. But it's also the team's responsibility to be good and then have, have fans sell their tickets months ago because they fired the coach and the team seemed like it was going nowhere. So I appreciate Steve Wilkes going out there and challenging the fans and being like, hey, we have the best fans in the NFL. I truly believe that. I've been all around the league. Please show up, support this team next this weekend and next in the final two home games. He had that video that came out on Pan, that with the Panther social media team following the win in Seattle, talking about, hey, we got to protect the bank. They won three straight home games all under Steve Wilkes since he's taken over, and he wants to keep it up as four and then five straight at home this weekend against Pittsburgh and next weekend against Detroit. So I know a lot of y'all have been talking about Steve Wilkes being the new interim head coach of being potentially the being the head coach full time here in Carolina and how much you appreciate what he's done here. Go pay it for it. Go show him how much you appreciate him. If you have the means and get in that stadium, go support this team. Pittsburgh, they're five and eight. They're going nowhere. It's going to be Mike Tomlin's first losing season as the Steelers head coach. Carolina Panthers can guarantee that with a win on Sunday. Go out there, support this team if you can. And hopefully they can come out and get a win. Now, breaking down a game on Sunday, Wilkes talked about just how physical they were, being able to run the ball down Seattle's throat. I talked about the Seahawks being soft yesterday and still firmly believe that. If you're a team that constantly week in and week out allows teams to run the football on you, you cannot be considered a physical and a tough football team in the National Football League. Really don't want to call out grown men, but that's what I'm doing here out in Seattle, and I'm sure these guys don't even listen to this anyways, but they should know in the heart of hearts that they really aren't tough enough to be able to win football games like the one that the Carolina Panthers won on Sunday, 30-24. Now we go back to what was a key moment in the game where I certainly was concerned about why the hell they ran the ball four straight times. And I know you as a fan also were. We talked about it yesterday. You saw after that, the Panthers immediately on the next drive went down, ran it eight times in a 10-play drive to go up 27-17 to and basically salt the game away right then and there. They could have done that on the previous drive when on fourth and inches, Steve Wilkes did not hesitate, said, hand it off to Deontay Foreman, get that first down, and after that, it was four straight passes. Now, Wilkes talks about two of those calls or RPOs, and Sam Darnold decided to pass the ball, one of which was that third down where it looked like Darnold could try to run it in. Would he have gotten in or not? Not quite sure. We'll never know. And Wilkes brought up other opportunities that Sam Darnold had to run the football. I think back to the previous drive and the first drive there in the second half when Darnold had an opportunity to run the ball there towards the sideline for the first down and say decides to throw it about 15 yards down the field to Stephon Sullivan, the tight end, who didn't catch the ball. And that leads to a three and out right after the half after Seattle closed the gap to 20 to 17 and had a ton of momentum inside of a stadium where the cloud, the crowd was electric throughout the afternoon. So two RPO calls, Darnold made the wrong decision there. Darnold's going to make better decisions as far as, Hey, trust your legs. We saw last season when Sam had five rushing touchdowns in the first four weeks that he can do this. He did it back even in New York. He had that Thursday night football game where he had like a 60, 70 yard run. So Sam Darnold is more than capable of being a rushing threat at the quarterback position. And considering that the passing game isn't really being asked to do too much, Darnold can add to the running element of this team in those situations. So he missed those a couple of times yesterday, but did not hurt the Carolina Panthers to the point where they lost the game. And if you go back after the, the decision to throw it four times and RPOs and all that, the Panthers ran it 17 times in their last 19 plays. They understood. Let's get back to our identity. Let's go to Deontay Foreman. Let's go to Raheem Blackshear. Let's go to Chuba Hubbard. Let's lean on these guys and sprinkle in some Sam Darnold as well in a little out route or a little, uh, well, not an out route, but um, a little, uh, was it a screen? A little bubble. Yeah, bubble. Yeah, whatever. You know, throw it out to the to the the flat to um, LaVishka Chenault, to do all that kind of stuff. And that worked out in the end as the Panthers were able to win that game. Now, one thing that I totally missed yesterday, and I, I forgot to mention, I, I did see that DJ Moore had three targets, zero catches. 
And if you told me that DJ Moore is going to have three targets and zero catches with the Carolina Panthers win on Sunday, I, I might have still said yes because really the goal was to run the football. Like that's what Carolina needed to do, and they did exactly what I thought they would do. And I figured that that that's what they were going to be focusing on. But simply, whenever you were, if you, someone is going to tell that before a game, you would think, yeah, the Panthers probably lost because DJ is the best wide receiver. And if you're not going to get DJ the ball, DJ the ball at all, then there's going to be a problem there for Carolina. Now he did have. Um, kind of an end around there as far as like running the football. He had a little jet, a little jet sweep. So that he did get involved in the offense there. But as far as the pass game, he was non-existent. And I didn't even notice that he went out with an injury late in the fourth quarter until I saw Ian Rapport on Monday morning tweet out that DJ Moore was having some imaging done on Monday on his ankle and a test would determine the seriousness of the injury. Steve Wilkes confirmed that he was going to get an MRI and that he uh, would have more information on Wednesday. Um, didn't really want to give too much away to Pittsburgh and let them know like whether DJ is going to be good or not. Apparently, the play happened late in the fourth quarter when DJ was blocking, then got rolled up on. You see it all the time in football. Always get so concerned when guys get rolled up on in their lower legs and their lower bodies, and hopefully that's not anything serious. And then come to find out, right before doing this podcast, that even Rapport tweeted out that uh, Panthers wide receiver DJ Moore is now considered day to day with a knee sprain uh, for his source, and he's added it to nothing significant. So knowing that and hearing that, at least from Rappaport, we'll get final confirmation on Wednesday from Steve Wilkes when he speaks to the media again and the Panthers are back at practice. It feels like DJ Moore should be good to go on Sunday afternoon against Pittsburgh, but still the key for the Carolina Panthers is going to be running the football. Terrace Marshall had an awesome catch where he was able to catch it with his knees, and it somehow didn't touch the ground, and he's – kind of emerged over the last couple of weeks since the Panthers traded away Robbie Anderson to Arizona and the Cardinals. And Terrace is someone who I said before the season, I thought eventually he'd become the number two wide receiver for this team has a lot of talent. And Steve Wilkes talked about, it's not just catching the football. It's also him being better as far as the run game and blocking and all the other little things that wide receivers have to do that he has to grow out there and do. And then Shai Smith, someone who's been kind of quiet throughout the season, had an issue there on a punt where he, I guess he didn't really fumble and he, he might've been down. We've seen special teams kind of concerns with Shai Smith. He earned a number three wide receiver job out of camp, but really hasn't shown all that much throughout the season. Had that touchdown reception right after the J.C. Horn interception yesterday. Like those guys, Shai, Terrace, anyone else out there got to step up and provide something in the passing game, especially now Chris McCaffrey's been gone. And if DJ Moore is going to be a little limited moving forward in the game on Sunday against Pittsburgh again, what this team needs to do is run the football. And one of the packages that we've seen the last couple of weeks is when they bring in Cam Irving as a swing tackle, and they also put Cade Mays back there as a fullback. Forget Gio Ritchie. Cade Mays, man, put all 300 pounds back there and lead the way. Found out on Monday that Bradley Bozeman says that the package is called the, the, uh, the Arby's package because they've got the meats. So I absolutely love that name. Absolutely love what I've seen from this team physically up front over the last couple of weeks and the identity that they've been able to establish, not just on the offensive side of the ball, but also on the defensive side of the ball, where a weakness for the Panthers team going into the season, and we saw week one against the Browns, was stopping the run. And what have they done the last couple of weeks against Atlanta, against Baltimore, even in a loss, against Denver, and then against the Seattle Seahawks, who were down DJ Dallas and Kenneth Walker, the top two running backs. Didn't really matter either way because the Panthers absolutely dominated up front all day long, being able to set the edge of Brian Burns as far as the run game goes, and also being able to stop the run, period, from the interior with Derek Brown, who's continued to have a great game. And in Frankie Luva, who is absolutely everywhere on the field on Sunday and every single week. And Shaq Thompson, the veteran leader, also in the middle of that defense. So the Carolina Panthers are going to move towards their focus on Pittsburgh. Steve Wilkes constantly asked about playoffs, constantly asked about <clears throat> His job status moving forward, not concerned about that at all. What he's concerned about is winning on Sunday against Pittsburgh, taking it one week at a time, getting to six and eight, and then they'll move on from there to, to Detroit, at Tampa, at New Orleans, but focus on one game at a time. And that focus, his leadership, that entire attitude has led the Carolina Panthers to a position where if they win out, they're going to be hosting a playoff game here for the first time since 2015 and fingers crossed. I really hope that happens. Now, a lot of us are also hoping the Carolina Panthers, namely David Tepper, the owner here named Steve Wilkes as the head coach. And people are saying, go ahead, take off the interim tag right now. One problem is there's NFL rules that prevent that. I must remind you all of that here momentarily while also still offering my, I would say tepid endorsement of Steve Wilkes, although I want to see it happen. 
Still got to kind of wait and see here as far as Steve Wilkes potentially here to Carolina. So I'll we'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. This episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by our friends over at betonline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, and news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got you covered at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts like this one, you can also find those at BetOnline as well. They are always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline where the game starts. So I put it out on Twitter following the game on Sunday saying that Steve Wilkes just keep on winning. Leave no doubt. Make it to where David Tepper has no choice but to hire you. David Tepper came out after firing Matt Rule and offered much explanation to why Rule was fired. We all knew it. Matt Rule went 11 and 27 through 38 games and started off the year one and four and whiffed on a quarterback position, not once, not twice, but three times. And the last guy is now starting in L.A. I think he'll start in L.A. moving forward, that being Baker Mayfield. But Matt Rule, we know all the issues. and We've seen it here over the last eight weeks, how this team can play if they actually have a capable head coach and leader in Steve Wilkes. And we have seen that play out over the last couple of weeks. Because of that, people are now wondering what this team could look like if Steve Wilkes has a quarterback that is truly proven to be the franchise guy. Now, if they draft a quarterback, that will not be a proven franchise guy. The hope will be in about three years time that the Panthers will know that they got the right guy. But bringing in a rookie, there's always going to be questions about that. But I understand that that is the most likely path for the Carolina Panthers at this point in time to find a franchise quarterback. Sam Darnold has come out the last two weeks. He's protected the football. He's made good decisions. Now, sometimes he's missed on things like trying to run the football like we saw on Sunday, but still, Sam Darnold, his confidence is growing. Jeremy Chin was speaking to the media about that on Monday. You can just see how he's carrying himself. People are saying how bearded Sam Darnold is a completely different guy. He's more chill than um, clean-shaven Sam Darnold. And Sam Darnold's already a pretty chill dude. So I'm just trying to figure, like, how calm is this guy right now? And is the power in the beard? If so, Sam, what have you been doing this whole time in your career? You should have always had the beard. But happy to see Sam Darnold playing well. I just don't sit here right now and say with 100%, 100% certainty that, yeah, Sam Darnold's the guy. I mean, we've seen a lot to tell us that he's not the guy. But right now... Things are going well. Sam's making the right plays, missing some things, but still, yeah, that happens in the game. Everyone in the NFL, every quarterback, as good as they're like, Mahomes threw three interceptions on Sunday. Every quarterback misses plays. But Sam Darnold, all in all, is giving you exactly what the Carolina Panthers need at a quarterback position right now, and hopefully he can give you more moving forward to the next four weeks and hopefully in a playoff game because that's what you're going to need eventually. But right now, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be long-term. Maybe it's Sam. But in all likelihood, it's going to be a rookie who's going to at least get the opportunity. Will they end up being the right guy? That's to be determined later. And, and Steve Wilkes is still not really all that concerned. I think it was David um, Newton who was asking about, you know, quarterback in the future and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, Wilkes told us back when this all began, like, I got 13 weeks to do it my way. Like, clearly, he's not all that concerned about what the future is going to hold for the franchise because he does not know whether he's going to be the long term head coach here in Carolina. And I would like to see it happen. As I'll continue to tell y'all, see what's he's got to keep winning. It can't just be maybe if it's six and six, then that'd be great. But I don't know if that's enough. And looking back on it, when I first kind of talked about this, like if you got the 500 there, that would then mean the Panthers went seven and 10. Like, hey, like that's pretty good to be six and six over the course of 12 weeks, especially considering all of the issues that they had as far as having to get some guys out of town, like Robbie Anderson, the coaches that have left, a uh, quarterback merry-go-round that they've been on and the injuries and all that and to be able to still hold it together to the point where you're six and six like being able to handle that adversity the football adversity it's not real life adversity but the football adversity of it all that speaks to steve wilkes's leadership and the players talk about how he's so straightforward with them and they certainly are fighting for him and jack thompson said as much other players have said as much about how they're fighting to get steve wilkes's job and i would love to see that happen i'm just going to continue to say he's got to keep winning the reason he's got to keep winning is David Tepper made it very clear when this all began that he really didn't have much interest in hiring Steve Wilkes. Certainly, he'd leave up the possibility for it to happen 
as long as Wilkes has done and did an incredible job. And up until this point, at four and four, and looking at how this team's played, Steve Wilkes has done an incredible job. Now we're sitting here today saying remove the interim tag. A lot of people are saying that. Now, if he loses the next four games, then clearly you probably would think that, eh, maybe not the guy considering that they imploded. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I have a hard time seeing that. We've only seen one real stinker that was just outright confusing, and that was the Bengals game a couple weeks ago. But aside from that, and really the Rams game, which was the first kind of the first week, short, I mean, Wilkes gets the job on a Monday. You got to put in PJ. You're trying to figure things out. Like, you can excuse that performance and what they did offensively that day. But aside from that, and the Bengals game, like, we've seen this team come out and fight week in and week out. The offense is still at its inconsistencies, but it's found an identity by running the football, which they've done extremely well, especially in their wins in the last couple of weeks. So I appreciate everything Steve Books has done, and I would love to see him get this football job. The thing about it is that we have to remember there are rules as far as hiring practices go in the NFL, and those hiring practices have been called into question by a man in Steve Wilkes who is, who is suing the league along with Brian Flores and a couple other coaches based off of their, their hiring practices and their alleged racism, prejudice that goes into it. Now, there's the Rooney rule that has to be fulfilled. Steve Wilkes, yes, he's a black man, but the Panthers, David Tepper, has to interview two external minority candidates for this job. He still has to go through the, pro the process, and he absolutely should go through the process of seeing who out there is available. Because there's plenty of you out there who still want Sean, who want Sean Payton to be your head coach. And Sean Payton has proven to be a good coach when it comes to working a quarterback, and he's won a Super Bowl. I know back when he was the Saints, we didn't love him. And I'm sure you still don't love him, but if you came to Carolina and won games, you would love him. There's still people out there that would love to see that happen. Not saying that they don't like Wilkes. I'm just saying there's still people out there who would love to see that happen. Who knows what David Tepper's interest is in and who he's looking at. But I've already said before, Dan Quinn, because of his connection with, Sean, with uh, Scott Fitterer, from their time in Seattle, he'll probably get an interview. I would love to see someone like D'Amico Ryan's defensive coordinator in San Francisco to get an interview. All those people should get interviews. Um, Shane Steichen, the OC up in Philadelphia, should get an interview. David Tepper should go through the process. But what's important for Steve Wilkes over the next four weeks is, while Tepper goes through that process, what needs to come back to in the back to Tepper is, man, I already have the right guy here. The guy who just goes to the playoffs. I already have the right guy. So that's what's important for Steve Wilkes is the next four weeks to go out there, continue to have his team play like this and get them to win games. And then David Tepper can talk to every single candidate. But at the end of the day, it's going to come back to Steve Wilkes and the man who's from Charlotte, the man who understands what keep pounding means and the man who was here when the team went to four playoffs in five seasons. Like that, that is what we hope is going to happen at the end of the day. And that's what Steve Wilkes, that's all he can try and do. That's the best of his controls to go out there and win games. And when David Tepper talks to all these candidates, he's like, man, these guys are great. They're impressive. But it's nothing more impressive than what I've seen here. Now, I did see the sentiment from someone on Twitter being like, what's the point of having to go through the Rooney rule if they're already intending to hire a black coach? Well, I don't. I think it's ridiculous. Um, because what you're doing is robbing other minority coaches of opportunities to still get in front of an owner and to be able to go through the hiring process. Like, just because you're going to hire a black coach does not mean that you shouldn't still go out there and talk to more coaches, whether they're black or white or Hispanic. It doesn't matter to me. Still bring people in, still talk to them. So, yeah, absolutely. David Tepper needs to still keep an open mind. But Steve Wilkes can take control of that by winning out here and showing David Tepper that I'm your guy. And if, if Wilkes does that, then he absolutely deserves a job. But at five and eight, four and four, or four and four, really, I'm still kind of like, all right, I like Wilkes. I want him to keep winning. But let's kind of. Press pause a little bit here on Steve Wilkes getting the job. Like, would love to see it happen, but he's got to keep winning, and he's got to show David Tepper he's the right guy, leave no doubt, and it will all work out in the end. Now, the Carolina Panthers, as we know, they went out there in the playoffs, and looking at the rest of the division, as we did yesterday, more news coming out with what's happening in New Orleans, what's happening in Atlanta. Panthers are probably going to be tied, as long as they went on Sunday, at top of the NFC South. But is there a possibility they could still get in the wild card, depending on how things play out? We'll talk about that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. But before we do, this episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. So how does Prize Picks work? You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than your Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you can watch. This includes the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, 
the NHL, PGA Tour, college football, men's and women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, tennis, cricket, and so much more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match of the $100 with promo code locked on. So this is how it works. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. When you download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com today. As I do every Monday, I was reading Peter King from NBC Sports Football Morning in America, and he pointed out that if Cincinnati beats Tampa on Sunday, the Atlanta Falcons beat the New Orleans Saints, and Carolina holds serve at home and beats the Pittsburgh Steelers, that there will be a three-way tie atop the mighty NFC South at 6-8. and eight. And looking at that, the Panthers already hold a 21-3 victory a couple months ago against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have split with the Falcons at one and one. And they of course will face New Orleans in week 18 and Tampa in week 17. And they will be in prime position. I really feel like in the catbird seat to go on to win the NFC South. Of course, as long as they take care of business down in Tampa Bay and New Orleans. And of course on Sunday against Pittsburgh and then next Sunday against a Lions team has put themselves firmly in position to potentially be a wild card team. And when you look at it, the best case scenario for the Panthers, I mean, not the best case, like the most straightforward path to the playoffs at this point in time is winning against Pittsburgh, winning against Detroit, beat Tampa, beat New Orleans. Win your games. That's a simple thing to do. Win your games. You never want to back your way into it, but hey, if you can, you'll do it, but you would rather win. What if Carolina doesn't win the division? What if they somehow falter, lose to Tampa, Tampa finds a way to then maybe finish whatever eight, nine, nine, and eight. Well, I guess not. Well, let's say, let's say nine and eight because that makes more sense because the Panthers, I still feel like as long as they beat New Orleans again, that would be four and two in the division, which, hey, I said before the season, like this team, I think they should at least go four and two. I thought it would look a lot differently as we've seen. It's a wild and crazy NFL season. It's a week to week league. You can never be too high, never can be too low. And a lot of strange things are happening all across the league, especially here in 2022, but they're four and two in a division. And then it would have split Atlanta and Tampa looking tiebreakers. I mean, you know, we'll see how they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to be nine, eight, whatever. Either way, say they're eight and nine, say the Panthers are eight and nine and looking at the rest of the NFC. Is it possible for the Panthers to be a playoff team as a wild card team? Now what they need to do, of course is beat Detroit and hand Detroit a loss because Detroit right now at six and seven is in good shape with, I mean, they got two tough games. They got the Jets on Sunday in New York. The Jets are a team that are battling for the last spot, maybe the last two spots there in the AFC side of things as far as the wild card race goes. Um, and then, of course, they come to Carolina after that. So two tough road games for the Detroit Lions just went out there and beat the Vikings pretty convincingly. I know it was only 11 points at the end of the day with that. I looked at the score all day long, and it looked like they had full control at Ford Field of that game. So you get the win against the Lions, and the Detroit maybe loses another game. Like, you you got the tiebreaker of them. Like, Detroit has the Jets, can absolutely see that's even right now. You can see them losing that game. Of course, Carolinians take care of business there. Uh, then they, they should probably beat the Bears. I mean, I can't say they can. They'll probably beat the Packers, but who knows uh, what Packers team it is that's going to be obviously out of the playoff race by that point in time. So beat Detroit. You should be ahead of them. Seattle, you have the tiebreaker already. Seahawks can't see them beating the 49ers. San Francisco, Kyle Shanahan, that offense, they know how to run the football. Seattle's not going to stop them. Seattle also has to play the Chiefs. Um, they got the Jets as well. That could be a tough game. Like They could go into free fall mode here. And then the Rams, who they should probably beat at home. So it's a very good possibility that if they they could they could lose three games. I don't know if Seattle will lose three games. I would probably bet that they I don't see them being 49ers or Chiefs. And then the Jets, it's in Seattle. So maybe. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they go one and threes. And you already have the tiebreaker there. So you got tiebreaker of those two teams. Now, both of those teams right now are not in the uh current current playoffs. Two teams that you got to worry about are the Giants. And the Commanders. Now the Giants Commanders play on Sunday, so one of them will lose. 
And if you're looking at the Giants schedule right now, the Giants got the Vikings on the road. Probably going to be a loss. Then they get the Colts at home. Looks like a win. They got to go to the Eagles. Like the Giants look like a team that could either go two and two or one and three to end the season. Now, they only go one and three. Then they're say they're seven, eight, and one. No, they're not. They're eight, eight and one, and they're a playoff team. So wouldn't help out Carolina in that situation. And then looking at the Washington Commanders, if they lose to the Giants on Sunday at home, then they got the 49ers, they got the Browns, they got the Cowboys. Also, scenario where I could see them going two and two or one and three, which again would not be enough for the Carolina Panthers. What the Panthers needed was when the first time they played that one of those teams actually lost because what that tie did, as we've seen in the past, is it probably assured, not assured, but it made it more likely that both of those teams would make the playoffs rather than one of them would be out and the other would be in. So the Carolina Panthers, as I mentioned, the path to the playoffs is winning out going nine and eight because at eight, and nine, even if things like I look just broke down, even if they worked in their favor, the Panthers still at eight, and nine would not be there. And we go back to thinking about the loss against Atlanta, Cade may Cade York, rather the kicker for the Browns making a kick that he has not made all year long since then, as he's been one of the worst kickers in the league and just trying to figure out all the moments the Panthers would have just barely missed the playoffs. So yeah, they got to win out or they got to find a way to be eight and nine and winning division. But the division, once again, as is the only path, even the Carolina Panthers find a way to get to eight and nine to end this season and just fall short, short in the division. Okay, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Lockdown Patriots podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all make sure to watch the show and subscribe to the show over on our Lockdown Panthers YouTube channel. You can also check us out wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Just be sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss a single edition of the show. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where every single Friday, unless it's a holiday, I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions here on the show to at me or to participate, rather, either at me or DM me over on Twitter, at Julian Council. Already getting a lot of questions in now, so quickly get them in so I can answer your question this Friday. In the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole, as always. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Wednesday.